everyone. This is Alex Costa, your host of the ANR Design Unholstered podcast. This is episode 15. Our guests today are Chris and Brandon from Type A Rifle Company. Uh, the parent company is BG Defense. I'm sure some of you recognize that name. Uh, these gentlemen are the masterminds behind Type A Rifle Company. Um, they are one of the only companies out there making like almost all the components that go into their weapon systems, which is kind of unheard of. You know, they're not uh, using MIM parts and farming stuff out. They're doing everything themselves. And they do a lot of OEMs for other companies. They do some OEMs for us, um, but they do um, support a lot of OEM work for other major uh, companies and um, firearms accessory companies in the industry. But um, I'll let Chris and Brandon introduce themselves, tell a little bit about each other's back, not each other's backgrounds, but like your own backgrounds. Talk about your backgrounds and um, and not the wall behind you. And uh, we'll kick it off from there. Anyway, guys, take it away. What's up, man? Uh, I'm Chris. And uh, I mean, <laughs> we, Brandon and I started BG. 2014, maybe 14, about, yeah. yeah, 13, maybe. I don't know. I, I don't kind know. of started, uh, Brandon, you know, it, your whole family is dug into the machine world like ticks, man. Um, and really, it started, <laughs> it started, uh, we were drinking and you know, we had just shot some nice guns and you know, we started kind of taking them apart and looking at them and whatnot. We both had a, a firearms background, but. Uh, you know, we just started looking at it a little bit harder and we're like, man, the fucking price on these things. I just not, uh, there's, hey, there might be, yeah. there might be something to work with here. I think there was one t particular brand and we, yeah. they're a great company by the way, but yeah. we just looked at it and we're like, holy shit. Like yeah. three like, grand. And we're like, I, I, I don't think see I can, it. Yeah. Like, this is aluminum. That's steel. The runtime on this is probably X. <laughs> you and, know, you know, this looks like they buy it from so-and-so and you're just like, I just think I can do it. And in that moment yeah. we were like, I think we can start this company for like 10 grand. Yeah. I did the math. <laughs> <laughs> we built like five rifles. Yeah. And yeah. Sell we them did. And see what happens. First mistake. <laughs> Before, I got my bar mitzvah. Yeah. Market, yeah, I yeah I use it pretty much. Yeah. Uh, you know, fucking. And when it, you guys meet though? Uh, Chris married my sister. Yep. Oh, so it's in the family. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. We're, we're brother in laws. Um, and, you know, I married his younger sister. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So we started. I mean, crime. We started out of a basement. Um, a basement and, and running running parts from you know one shop to another on after hours to be able to run yeah. them on other people's machines. Well, my dad right. had a little shop, yep. so we were running some parts there, but most of the assembly was being done in the, in the basement. And we were only there for six months. Mm -hmm. And then we moved into a shop. This What was a shop size? I don't know. I mean, maybe 5,000 square foot, maybe 2,500. It was tight. It was tight. <laughs> and then we were there for probably maybe a year and a half or yep. two. And then, was... and then we moved into a 30,000 square foot complex. <laughs> it happened yeah. pretty quick. Yeah. Damn, that's yeah. big. Yeah. yeah. Now we didn't use all of it. Um, we used some of it, um, but we, we, we transitioned quickly uh, from, from using some of it to, to basically occupying all, all but 10,000 square feet of that 30,000. Yeah. It, it was a lot better in, you know, the couple hundred square feet doing electrical and shit. Yeah. <laughs> I totally get that. My yeah. business was two years in a basement of a city, 110 year old house, probably got, you know, fungal infections from the mold in the basement. <laughs> yeah. And, our first know. spot was wonky, dude. I was like a strip club. Like, yeah. There was no light. It was next to a bar. Yeah. We were working in after. a seedy area. <laughs> <laughs> you like, what the fuck is that sound? Yeah. You walk out we there had no and issue the shooting. Dumpster. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. There was fucking vagrants everywhere. It was great. That sounds like our second space um, <laughs> where there was a uh, prostitution and gambling ring on the floor near the shop that we moved from recently. Oh, I mean, God. that's all right. Oh, no. We, we like, rented that as for office space and like i walk in and there's like wall safes behind shitty paintings there's stripper lockers with nail polish you go to the bathroom and it says don't flush condoms or tampons um the back room where it had like the seashell turtle shell like lighting the mood lighting they had recently recarpeted so i'm pretty sure someone got murdered there and you could see <laughs> you could see like greasy stripper glitter ass prints against the wall where they had booths where like the girls would dance or fuck dudes it was 
so seedy and it was on the third floor of a mill building and it was a that, that was the last place you guys moved out of well like that was that was a unit that we rented for about a month till another yeah. clean unit opened up so uh, like our manufacturing our original manufacturing space was like 1600 square foot and then we had an office that was 1600 square foot that we also had shipping and receiving in and then we rented out a 900 square foot little shop that was all attached it was all on the same floor right and it was horrible now we're in a 6000 square foot facility that's much more comfortable right. are you on a on the main floor now or are you up on a Oh, we're on our it's just one floor we took over an old bread factory and the the okay. landlords fucking put an 8 ton ac unit on the roof dropped all of our electrical built offices for us and it's only like three dollars and seventy five cents a square foot. That's great. And they did that build out. They did the whole build out. They paved the parking lot for us. Uh, everything, security systems. It's all built did they, in. Did they recently buy the building? Had the building for like two years, but okay, they recently. Probably. So one of the owners of the building occupies fifty percent of the building with his woodworking shop, and then there's two unit two two six thousand square foot units available, and we took one of them. Oh, nice. nice. It's great, but we have a theft issue outside. Really? Just the, the area? Yes, it's like in the middle of the shithole city with three families all around, and most of the people yeah. don't have jobs and sit on their porches all day, and then when FedEx drops packages off on the street and doesn't knock our door, they disappear in five minutes. So yeah. we, we had Don't burn those houses down. <laughs> wow. I don't think you can say that on a podcast, Chris. I don't think you can. I'm not there. Uh, but put a doorbell, dude. We bought one we of those uh, Amazon <laughs> battery operated doorbells for our that loading dog. Fantastic. It's mainly so FedEx and UPS and all the truckers and shit. Uh, they don't they don't even have to get out of their truck. They can just bang the bell right at the overhead. That's cool. We uh, the, loading dock. Yeah. Ours is a little different. Like our address is one side of the building, but our actual manufacturing space is on the other side where we do have wow. our loading docks. So wow. FedEx is just like they don't even bother going into the okay. like the 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 com <laughs> the community you know the community hallways and walk down. They just leave it on the fucking city street, and you're just like, like we had a table saw disappear last week, and then a, oh, really? a concerned neighbor brought it a week later, probably because they had no purpose for a fucking table saw, and they probably couldn't resell right. it. Right. right, they didn't know what it was. Gumbags. And the uh, uh, building security yeah, system. about that. Uh, FedEx told us to pound sand because Home Depot doesn't do insurance, and then we called Home Depot, and Home Depot said, uh, "Call your credit card company for a charge back because we're not going to." No, I, I'd call them and be like, "Hey, man, you can't fucking leave shit outside." Oh, we do. They, yeah. the, the same FedEx driver is the one that used to do our old facility. He used to. There was a Chinese export company downstairs. They used to give all our guns to the Chinese. Uh, you know, downstairs. So Sweet. once a week, we'd go down and collect all our guns. It was, you know, it was cool. <laughs> nice anyway so you guys where are you guys located for all those listening uh nowhere yeah, yeah. no uh, we're not pretty a... hidden we're in a pretty nice area but what what city Grand Grand Rapids. Rapids. yeah 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 um <laughs> more, I, more because i just don't want to deal with it i just don't for a we don't have an o1 ffl right which you would need to have if we wanted to have a storefront um and we don't have the amount of people right now I don't think with an 07, you can have a transactional basis. Yes, you can. Retail store. Yeah. You can as yep. an 07? Yep. I thought yep. she told me hey, you couldn't. No, you can't. <laughs> yes, you can, but... <laughs> for all my friends and family that want me to get a gun for them, you can't sell to individuals with an 07. I'm very sorry. Yeah, so. I guess my last five know. years of my life have been a lie. All right. I don't, I don't know if we'll ever do that. <laughs> um, because we do so much OEM work and there's not a lot of segregation. I mean, there is some separation from a shop less and so, less though yeah that's um, the only problem. you walk down a, the row of machines and you you'll see you know you can well, right. coming in the front office you can see everything out back too so you can right. it'd be really hard to separate it um, and, and just kind of a pain in the ass for no real upshot other than the only thing it would know. do is allow people to put their hands on it but that's what we have dealers for a lot of our dealers do a really good job of keeping or trying to keep product companies. Do you do shop tours? Fuck no. Right. That's our, kind of where we're at. Our door says, like, by appointment only, and people will be like, oh, I live 10 minutes away. Can I come pick up my holster? I was like, no. By the time we even realize that you're for pickup and we schedule something, it's going to be two or three days after we schedule it because right. we just don't have time to, like, you know, and then we just don't want people in the shop. And then well, um, our new space, we um, the landlords have been, the landowners have been coming by to 
hey how's everything going like all right they come by like once a day and we we're kind of like locking our doors now and just like nope couldn't hear you like we need to operate our shop Right. And um, they came by the other day. They're like, hey, can you can you change the name on the door to your parent, like your original parent company, Alex and Ryan Design? We're like, no, <laughs> that's not what we are. Oh, uh, well, can you can you change it to something that's not your name? Because we don't want the neighbors coming by and realizing there's a gun company here. And we're like, gun company? What are you talking about? Well, okay. we make we make plastic buckets for fucking pistols. Like, fuck off. Not Not fuck off to them, but just fuck off to everyone in the area. Like, they can yeah. fuck off. Right, right. Um, so yeah, how many we're, vendors we're, do you guys? We're unmarked. <laughs> You're unmarked. So yeah, how many I vendors do you guys have? How many vendors? Yeah, who sells your shit? Who sells our shit? Who's your or biggest vendor? vendor? Do you, Maybe do you know, we do not deal with uh, distributors, so we don't have any like RSRs or anything like that. Care we we made a conscious decision not to sell through those channels. So dealer direct. It's it's either yeah. dealer or individual. So. When we yep. first started, our business was heavily dealers. And the last two years is kind of more shifted towards individuals. Although okay. our dealers are growing all over the country. Yeah. Our individuals are growing our dealer sales by, I mean, by 70% probably. That's great. Typically, yeah, when we get an individual in an area that we don't have a dealer, right? So, and I'll follow this with something else, but uh, that, that's fairly important to our business model. But when we get an individual, you know, say in, you know, like Lubbock, Texas, right? And there's a gun shop there and, you know, they want it sent to Jim's gun shop. We ask them a little bit about the gun shop, like, hey, is it a nice place? You know, and you know, if they speak highly of it, typically when we when we connect on to exchange FFLs, uh, that's sort of like your foot in the door. Hey, I have a customer bought the gun directly from me, yada, yada, yada. He wants to ship it to your FFL. And that's that's kind of the end on potentially this person becoming another dealer. My experience, and, and Brandon can attest to it or tell, say I'm full of shit, uh, the one-off gun shops that, you know, the people are in it, you know, it's owner, operator, they fucking pay their bills Yep. for the most part. You know what I mean? They're, they're on time. They're easier to deal with. Um, our experience with some of the larger you know, multi-store operations are a fucking train wreck and you chase your money. Yeah. You know, we're talking 30 about 30 turns really into ones. 90. Yeah. Every fucking time. Yep. Um, so, <laughs> you know, my, my enthusiasm for getting in bed with a, a corporate, I mean, hard pass just. Yeah. We're not talking about large dealers that have two or three branches. You know, we're talking about ones that have places all over the country. They just haven't been that great to work with. Nobody um, will take responsibility. You they, can't they, they ask anybody you. on the phone. Yeah. And you're just trying to get paid. I know you have, I know you have accounts payable. Yep. And I know we don't, know. but right. <laughs> I yeah, have accounts yeah. too. Uh, <laughs> right, right, right. So, <laughs> no, I totally, uh, I totally get that vibe too. Cause um, I'm not going to name names, but we do a lot of OEMs for big companies and companies are great. FN pays on time. Camera nice. pays on time. Optics yeah. Planet pays on time because we ship on time. Yeah, but nice. um, we have a couple big ones, billion dollar companies that like to be 90 days past and at 45. Yeah. And uh, Sounds right. I've sent, I've sent some nasty grams before that don't help. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. But I don't understand when you're a billion dollar company, pay your fucking bills. Right. Uh, they're just stretched, you know, and they use it as a tool. Um, but and I get it, but I'm just we're not going to be a victim of it. And typically, their bills are, you know, not very big. You know, it's it just depends. It, some, I mean, there's been some where you're like, hey man, you owe me a lot of money right now for. But there's know. been some that are just a little here and there, and you're like, yeah, hey, you guys are just blatantly ignoring. Yeah, me. there there's been a few where you're like, it's fourteen hundred dollars. But yeah, yeah. to kind of get back to what Chris, <laughs> what Chris was saying is if we have a dealer in the area yeah, and, the, and the customer wants to use them, we'll, we'll run that sale through the dealer. The dealer will make their money on it, right? Cool. We prefer that route. That's awesome. We, <laughs> we, we prefer the dealers to handle the transaction. They're the one pushing our products. They're, they're the soldiers on the street, you know. They keep an inventory yep. when we can provide it yep. right now. Um, but yeah, if, you're, if, you, if that person's in an area and they want to use a dealer who's already a stocking dealer, even though the dealer doesn't know about the gun until it shows up, they still make the same nut that they would make on it if, if, they, if they sold it off their wall. Yep. Make that nut. Uh, make that nut, son. Got to get that nut. They'll make good money on it. I mean, our our <laughs> the, um, the dealers are allowed to make good money. I know there's some manufacturers, manufacturers out there where they're making $10, $15 on a gun. That's 
I, there's no money. In, there's not a lot yeah. of money in guns. I, on a previous podcast, I talked about, I explained like, you know, like let's say let's say Jeffy buys a gun at a local yeah. gun shop, and he's like, oh, I got the Sig two two six Legion. I love it. Right, goes that home, shoots gun. it. Would that would be a gun. Yeah, that's a fucking Jeffy. Gun and right Jeffy goes there. home and goes, man, I fucking hate this gun. This gun sucks. I'm taking it back. I'm, I you know I put mag through it, and then they go back to the gun shop and they're like, all right. You know, I want to trade this in towards something else. And they're like, okay, we're going to give you, you paid, let's say, 990 bucks for the gun. Okay, we'll give you 400, 300 bucks for the gun. You know, and I just paid 900 for this gun. People don't understand that, like, go through RSR distribution. Guns are fucking expensive. And they are a, lar- they're a very large capital investment for inventory. So when you buy a gun, let's say you buy a Glock 45 right sure. that gun is 500 495 on rsr and the yeah. map on it is like 550. yeah right. yeah so you're making like 60 bucks for the transaction right. someone comes into the gun shop you got to fucking coerce them into like picking this gun right or or you go through a bunch of guns you spend you know an hour letting them finger fuck things so there's let's say you make 18 bucks an hour so now the profit for the store is only 40 dollars, and right. then that person comes back in and says i don't like this gun i want my money back you know and you're just like too fucking bad and you know you're gonna you're not even gonna give them what you paid for it because now it's a used gun so you're gonna pay right. half you're gonna offer half as much as you already paid for the new gun which on that glock 45 is 497 or 95 bucks cut that in half and then the customer is super disgruntled. They say, fuck you, and you lost a customer for life right. because they don't understand yeah. guns. So, fuck them. Yeah. Glock's a, I mean, that, that's a particularly interesting case on not much margin. But they can. They're Glock. Yeah. Glock. Oh, it's yeah. just an example. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a, well, it's a, it is a perfect it's example. Do you guys have good margins on your, your rifle and pistol yeah. systems? Um, Renaissance Arms is a local dealer for you guys here in new hampshire so if anyone listening for new hampshire and you want to get a type a rifle renaissance sells them they're nice. great right yeah. re- that's correct jeffy yes. you can confirm yeah yes yeah jeffy <laughs> confers. Can <confirm. laughs> uh, they're uh yeah i mean at least we think the margin's pretty good yeah I, um percentage wise it's aggressive and you know that what that what equates to in dollars is is pretty good but as you well. have to incentivize the dealers that want to carry your product and right and push it. when you're not i mean we're all in a fucking scramble just to keep up right now right? right but there are times when that's not the case and when that's not the case you gotta have that brick and mortar supporting you yeah or you've got a fucking problem yep well what kind of incentives do you provide for your dealers right now i don't know in general <laughs> uh, <laughs> are you just incentivizing them by giving the profit margin that they're like holy yeah. fuck i can make that right. money on that gun yeah right. okay yeah. cool we do we do <laughs> so like for our we, we offer our hard good holsters right and then yep. um like ours for dealers is like you want to order 15 holsters we'll give you 35 percent off you want to order 50 or more we'll give you 40 percent off people are like Damn, that's a good percentage. And yeah. then if you're working a shop and you got 10 fucking sales associates on the floor, we'll make each of them a fucking free holster so that when they're walking around with the gun on the hip, they're selling shit. So they make well, more money right. and it compounds. We've, like we've done that too, where yeah. you kind of incentivize the guy on the floor. Every time he sells one, he gets X amount of points, and then after so many points, which is attainable. That's cool. They can, they can, they can pick out a gun. I mean, typically what they've done in the past is they all take turns on the shop floor and they trade. Oh, yeah. So they all gather points and like, okay, Bob's up next. When Bob gets his gun, then Joe's up next, and they kind of pull it together. Immediately becomes a pyramid scheme. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know what? <laughs> it's it's fine. It's like you're paying your dues. Yeah, you work yeah. the floor X amount of times. Yeah. It reminds yeah. me of a video game I used to play in a clan for a video game. We used to put one person first every time, and you had to all put your work in. Anyway, that's oh, yeah. God. I'm a fucking dork. Um, yeah. that's cool though, and and a lot of gun companies do that. I, I remember yes. yeah. a buddy of mine's like, oh, I sold fucking twelve thousand dollars in six pistols, and I get to pick one gun off of this list or some shit like yep. that. So, yeah, yep. and that's something that's popular amongst uh, gun retail associates. Yeah, so. they have a pretty aggressive um, uh, like dealer program too. As far our what, what the fuck do we call it when the somebody that works there wants to buy one? Yeah, it's an employee purchase employee program. purchase program. Yeah, it's below the dealer's cost. If as long as the dealer okay's it, but we'll yep. go below the dealer cost for a, a one off purchase yep. for an employee. That's awesome. Um, yep, dude. It, well, I'm not afraid to put the product in somebody's hand. 
I know you guys are. It's not. I, you know, yeah. It, it actually is an easier sell that way. We were like, what makes you different? And we we're like, I'm fucking not good at this. Just shoot it. You're talking. Shoot it. Just you know what I mean? It speaks for itself. Uh, they do. Right. We do. Con- I've got three yeah. of them. They're fucking amazing. Uh, We've done it in consignment where the guy's like, I don't know, man. You know, I never heard of you guys. And you're like, all right, put it on the wall. Yeah. It doesn't sell in a month. I'll take it back. And, you know, if he calls me up within a week, he's like, they sold. You're right. Yeah. So, you know, we'll, we'll go out of our way. The good thing is, is we're not a huge company. Um, so we have the ability to kind of make those decisions that the bigger companies yeah. can't. So. Right. And certainly early on, we were like, oh, dude, let me send you a gun, put it on the wall. If it doesn't sell, you don't owe me shit. But if okay. it does, you gotta see buy what happens. More. Yeah. yeah. It, but if it if it sells, if it sells in a week, put in an order. Yep. Yep. That's great. And you're usually like, okay. So let's talk about your guns. I mean, you guys have pride yourselves on pretty much making almost all the primary functional uh, components of the firearm. You do your own triggers, yeah. upper and lower receivers. Um, you're obviously you're not doing stocks or buffer tubes or buffers, but no, we're not doing any no any, molds. Yeah, we're not doing any mold stuff. No but... molds, but hand guards, barrels, um, yeah, triggers, Muzzle, receivers. Triggers. Um, yeah. so yeah, tell us a little bit about your weapon systems. What makes your brand? Because like that, doing all of that, a lot of big companies and people don't realize a lot of huge companies, um, that sell guns. They don't make bolt carrier groups. They don't make you know barrels and they're guard. by they're basically by oeming them out and then assembling yeah. them because they're only making a, a small percentage of uh the products and there's only so many forgers in the united states there's only so many places making bolt carrier groups but you right. guys are doing a lot of that in house because you said fuck fuck this bullshit correct and, and a lot of it's because we wanted to control the quality <laughs> yeah um and that's kind of why we started up our other oem section is man we've we've un unfucked a lot of stuff from vendors we just we'd get parts in and just like God, what the fuck is this and, he, and and we just ended up fixing the problems and never telling anybody because we're like that oh, we'll just bring it in house then if you yeah. can't make it right and you don't have any attention to detail then we'll just do it ourselves so we made you go back to them once and they're like they basically tell you to fuck off buy it or don't yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right <laughs> we made another half three quarters of a million dollar investment this year it has set us back a little bit um but we're adding the new billet upper and lower that will be first that is being wrapped up right now we're trying to narrow down the program we're trying to ma- narrow down the number of cutters you only have so many spots in the tool changer yeah. machines so we right. want to run all ops in the one machine so every time like chris says you open the door we're pulling out a part um, yeah. so that's happening now the ambi lower which is everybody's really excited about it's the same lower right it just has different cuts in it that has a lot more parts that we yeah. have to machine in house and there's some shit on that that it, it, um probably isn't gonna happen in house it's real specialty shit you could you we could make it but we could never make it fast enough small round parts yeah small round you, par- you need a to. you need a swiss screw machine that those no- are stupid expensive yeah, it, for for, for things reason. that don't cost much money, yeah. like right? If you go to a good Swiss screw shop, that's what they fucking do. Yeah. And you know, you start ordering ordering ten thousand pieces at a time, and it's you know, it's pennies. Right. So your ROI on an investment like that is fucking never. Right. And there's right. only so you many know, Swiss gotta... Swiss screw machines in the United States right now as well. Right. There is a finite amount, so farming those you out would... to those companies, you do get the points on them. Yeah, so we're yeah. we're in the process of prototyping all the small parts and pieces. There's probably like six or seven for the Ambi. So the, the billet will be next. We've introduced a bunch of new handguards. Um, there's one company out there that's a great company. We always talk about an SLR. And yep. I used to be like, holy shit, look at all the damn fucking handguard yeah. lengths they have. I used to sort of giggle. Like, why would you make that? <laughs> yeah. And now we're there. We're like, we have this yep. length, this yep. length, this length, this length, <laughs> and this size, this size, this one. So we're yeah. kind of we're kind of <laughs> at that point. They're they're good people there. Um, good, I know them as well. The do you? husband and wife. I, I, the good I don't people. know them, but I yeah, I've heard good, good things, and, and yeah, their company is pretty impressive. I yeah. haven't seen them in a long time, and I definitely haven't seen them as strong on social media lately. But that it's might just quiet, be quiet, right? It is kind of quiet, but they do have a really cool aesthetic as well. Uh, and, and my guess is they're busy. 
and they're just pounding out orders. Probably. Uh, and you guys are busy too. COVID really kicked up uh, your production yep. by what, like fucking five hundred percent or something absurd. Oh my God. Yeah, we were kind of heading there beforehand, um, and then you know, COVID was that booster that kind of kicked us over. Yeah. Um, and you know, we're this growing company that's you know we have growing pains right now. Um, we're really weeding out the the vendors we have. Um, we're really understanding what we mean to them, if anything. Right. So, you know, like our, our forgings, we're not getting enough. So we're making billet and we're going to probably move away from forgings at some point altogether. But this shit's, this shit's going to happen again. We're going to go on this another cycle, right? Of yep. the, the presidency. And I'm not going to get caught relying on somebody else ever again. So we may end up cannibalizing. We haven't talked about it much, but we've always talked about maybe just getting rid of the Gen 3 line. We just stick with a pro and contractor. Yep, but you're forging, so a lot of people will be like, forging is stupid. You guys do a really good job with uh, how you do your post-processing of the forgings because uh, you guys really hand-fit the, 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 the... You can't finish everything. It, the, the receiver tightness between the upper and lower receiver for a forging is unbelievable. Like, you guys yeah. make good guns. Yeah, there's a there's a there's quite a bit that you do to a forging still. Um, if you're that loose, you're kind of fucking around. Yeah, it, you know what I mean. Um, you it, it, it's it can be done. Yeah, um, yeah. You just but it's one of those things you just, you need to pay attention. But you guys have extreme attention to detail. You guys do OEM some parts for us that we are super super happy with. There's there's nothing that you guys don't do that we're not happy with. Um, we're gonna we're gonna have to start laser engraving some NATO stock numbers on some stuff soon. I'm happy for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and listen, you know, <laughs> we we've you know we've had our own troubles. I mean, we we've been struggling with tooling. Like I know we made you one component, and we had problems with some chatter marks because yeah. the tooling was bad because we couldn't get it. You know, it was like, yeah. oh, this is six months out. And you're like, for tooling that was in stock. Yeah, there's some cutters that we really like for 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 aluminum, aluminum. but it yeah. happens and you guys yeah. are you guys stand by your quality 100 and you guys did what most companies wouldn't do is make the parts again yeah okay make it right oh, yeah. 100%. Fucking sure yeah what's the other option yeah well there are companies out there that'd be like pound sand like we used to like we had a coder that we used to go through we had a manufacturing facility in new hampshire that we used to use and then we used to go through a coder and sometimes that coder would or that anodizer would just send us oh here's 25 bad parts because the anno went bad and we're like so that's twenty eight hundred dollars in parts i can't sell like what right. I'm, what the fuck like we blast them and that. fucking finish them right and they're like do you want to pay to have them redone be like, like no i want you to do them how i paid you the first fucking well, they time were, they were blasting them. <laughs> we had on the fucking build sheet that they need to to peen it first and then yeah. um and then coat it which obviously makes anno stick better they weren't doing that and that you're getting those like stains those acid stains from the yeah, the white the white stains yeah and they're like sorry yeah you? i'm like no you're supposed to fucking blast these or tumble these prior to doing right. anno so the anno looks better you know and, oh yeah. okay and then they would say yeah they'd send me a fucking bill right Bruh. or they weren't or they wouldn't plug certain threaded holes when they would re anno it's just like oh my a, a god good anodizer understands that yeah are, are you reworking these do you have concerns with your thread tap like oh, you know so good guys there are some companies out there we have them. we st we're struggling with them now but they are the best right and they claim that they're struggling because of of covid because people are getting paid more yeah. on unemployment than they are to come in for work and pay more money we used to be able to put money on it that it would turn <laughs> on two weeks and i mean we have a batch there that he told us four weeks and we're going on eight nine eight nine yeah i, I mean it's, it's right it's, it's, it's nine weeks it's ridiculous <laughs> yeah i mean it yeah. and COVID is real like we we grew quite a bit through COVID as well we yeah, added really. five yeah. new positions to our shop yeah. and uh when we uh, when we first got into COVID, we were able to get new hires pretty frequently we'd be like you know i mean our lowest we, we start people at 17 an hour because yeah. We're in the Northeast. You can't yeah. not, you know, my yeah. company was in Tennessee. I could probably charge 12 bucks an hour and do really well. Yeah. But up here, you got to, you you know, and we're selling our products for the same prices, companies in other states that have much less overhead. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. And I mean, we offer 
4% matching 401k. We do 70% paid platinum PPO healthcare plan for our employees. And we have 10 people on it. And, um, you know, we have a lot of overhead. And during COVID, in the beginning, we'd, we'd put a job up. We'd get, fuck, we'd get 70 applicants for a job in three days. Then the last three months, we'd get one over a month would apply. Because there's okay. so many jobs available right now that people have such a huge talent, like there's a huge business pool to pull from and right. not enough people looking for jobs. And we've had people sit down going, man, I could be sitting on my ass playing video games making uh, almost as much money. And we're like, yeah, but then when they cut the, when they turn the faucets off, you're not going to have a career and you're going to have an empty fucking, yeah. you know, resume. It's going to look like shit. Yep. You're going to have a gap. And we, but we just hired like three new dudes and every single one of them had a job wanted to work for us and is loving working for us and it, Sweet. and we got really lucky we it was like a one for one like whoa, here's the job listing interviewed one person holy fuck this person's great hire well, them and there, there's something to that man i mean you know that you, you hear that like kind of fucking super like squirrely like i don't know i've, I've heard it come out of like corporate america and like i don't know like companies that i would never do business with but you're like gonna create like an environment and a culture and you're like you 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 fucking do if your shop is cool everybody fucking works hard but what you're doing is fun and cool and you can you know you you get a bunch of relatively like-minded people and at least the arguments and banter and bicker are a fucking riot and i mean we have a we have a pretty gangster shop we really do You know, there's fucking weaponry everywhere. There's machines everywhere. We got a gym. We got all kinds of shit. We, you know, we make fucking lunch. Um, you know, it, but that lunch that we have every day is like, it's one of those things where you're like, it's the team, right? It's a family. Yeah, you got to create that fucking group, brotherhood, that yeah, camaraderie. Yeah. Of, yeah. Of, of talk, you know, talking shit and just it, it's it's a much of a hangout. We work a lot of fucking hours, man. Yeah. You can't be here if it's, if it's a job. Yeah. yeah. You guys work like six days a week. You fucking yeah. psychopaths. Ten, 10 to 12 hours a day, typically. Yeah. 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 You guys are working real hard. You know, and, and just like you said, those lunches, man, we do the same thing. Uh, all of our staff will sit around the conference table. They'll throw on some goofy fucking, like, they were like Raptor raptor priest or some shit the other day they've been going through like <laughs> shitty movies uh now they're going down like i forget what they watched uh dodgeball like ben stiller movies right yeah, now yeah, so yeah. there is the, <laughs> you know and and I, I have a home office now and you know my <laughs> position is more like military and law enforcement sales and marketing so yep. i don't have to be as present in the shop i have a great manager but you know when i go yeah, in it's always some fucking it. stupid movie they're watching i was like you son of bitches you, yeah. you know it's um, great man uh, we started I mean, doing that, uh, that's the position from above right you just you're yeah. you're managing people now bro yeah. yeah and i have a great manager you guys know justin and yeah, then yeah, he's fantastic yeah absolutely we have great staff um one thing i decided to do recently is i want to start doing employee highlights like so they're filming one right now for one of our newer hires named ian and um our video guy jorge is kind of setting it up making it like setting up like the they're doing after hours lights off but with RGB lighting to kind of illuminate their workspace. And, you know, I want, I want to start like, like I do give back to the employees quite a bit, but, or we do uh, give back to the employees quite a bit, Johnny and I, but we want to continue like to, you know, put them on this pedestal because they're the ones that are fucking working their asses off to keep, to keep the shop running. So we're going to start doing employee highlights. There's a couple employees are like, eh, that's not for me. Totally fine. Whatever. Yeah, but yeah, whatever. Some of these employees are like, man, they you want can't. to put me on a YouTube video. They want to yeah. fucking yeah. put me on social media and highlight me as like stat. And I'm gonna, everyone's gonna get their shot, right? We're gonna do like one right. a month. So it's it's fucking cool, man. It's it's cool to own a business. It really is. You guys, when you zoom out enough from the day to day fucking banging your head and unfucking problems, then yeah, it actually is. It's kind of surreal, man. Um, yeah the sign of success for i think both chris and i and chris you know we both had part-time jobs and then we made this our full-time career i remember (laughs) in the very beginning you know i was working a lot having two jobs and being successful at both but i remember chris telling me like well how does it feel and he was like 
I don't know what day of the week it is. And I was like, and don't fuck. care. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the sign of success is like when, when it's Thursday and you're like, is it Tuesday? I what day is it? Day is it? <laughs> right. Um, right. That's, that's how yeah. I feel. I don't care. I mean, I'm tired getting up. You know, I get up, Chris and I split shift. The production starts at 6 a.m. Yeah. Um, machining start, the machine start at 6 a.m. And we're always here before everybody, and one yep. of us is always here after. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I don't do that. I like to sleep a little bit more. I can't not. I'm not a morning person, but uh, good for you guys. Um, <laughs> now, when did I? Now, Brent, I remember when you were working two jobs. That wasn't too too long ago. No. So um, I just quit. You know, la- well, yeah. I mean, I guess I'll throw it out there. I mean, COVID was probably the best thing that ever happened to us. Um, Same here. It, it grounded it grounded me um in my other job and then allowed me to stay here and, and do you know emails and whatnot so really i know i i quit towards the beginning of this year is when i finally left because we just got so busy i was either going to hire somebody else or i was just going to come over so um and it, it never was the problem that i had i would have i would have moved over sooner but i just kept on i kept on hitting all these bogeys there's always these carrots dangling you're like well if you stay three more months you'll make another like 30 grand you're like son of a bitch should i wait maybe i'll make another 30 you know or wait. i'm not saying that was the number but you know what i'm saying so, right that um, was the number <laughs> that was the number <laughs> But, he get uh, fitness bonuses. Yeah. <laughs> Not only was he working here and there full time both, but he was also like the big swing and dick at the other company for sales. It was yeah. hilarious to watch. He wouldn't show up to meetings and people call me like, "Congratulations on your award, man." <laughs> He's like, "What I do?" <laughs> <laughs> it was like office pr- space, bro. He fucking I'm not proud. yeah. It was incredible. It I'm was incredible. It, but... it, it it goes to show like it how much busy work they were requiring of people but, but, but the stapler did. stapler yeah. <laughs> <It's too laughs> <easy>. <laughs> um yeah. no that's great i'm really i'm really happy that i get I to be you. friends with all of you guys and jeffy behind the camera and see we your successes jeffy. and see we your growth about jeffy but we love him yeah, yeah we love jeffy big old squishy bear yeah Ooh. okay now you're you're you know He's supposed to have anonymity, in, in, right? Uh, Is that the right word? Homosexual way. Okay, so um, <laughs> let's. So you know, I um, I'm really excited about some of your products coming out. You guys have a new handguard coming out, uh, yeah. an M-Lock handguard. I love your weapon systems, um, but I'm gonna, you know, and I've said this to you. I'm gonna say on the on the, on the stream or on this uh, podcast. I do a lot of night vision shooting. I have a lot of shit going on the front end of my gun. And yeah. sometimes I have had uh, some congestion at yep. the muzzle side of yep. your rails. Your yep. guns are amazing. Guns are fucking flawless. They fit perfectly. The triggers are great. Um, your SPR is probably my favorite AR ever. Nice. And that's your short stroke piston gun. Pretty big um, People, it's the softest shooting. And you guys are running us... Um, uh, what's the fucking gas block? Uh, how do you say? It? I always mess it up. Yeah, no, say it, Brandon. <laughs> you don't want to say it. Uh, yeah. Why uh, can't I remember what it is? But you're right. I Brandon mean, knows what it is. You should say it. So, and, and, and I run and I run suppressed, and uh, and I tune your guns for suppressed specific because I'm never gonna take a can off, right? right. Uh, a lot of people like to have their guns tuned so that you can run can on can off. That makes for a very um, strong felt recoil impulse through the system. Tune your SPR. So basically when I got it running fine, I want a couple more clicks of gas just to give it a little extra, just in case I get like a, a low pressure round or something like that. But that gun is unfucking believably uh, smooth shooting, fast shooting, uh, very low felt recoil impulse, um, superlative arms. That's it. You anyway, uh, you guys use superlative. I want to say super related. <laughs> super related. So <laughs> better than that. Listen, I, had spe- I went through speech therapy growing up. I was deaf, so, so I'm super... Terrible. Did you call us work. Alexandrian design back in the day? You fucking <laughs> loser. I called you that? No, I'm just kidding. I said oh. you probably did. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alexandrian. You know how many people used to say that? That's why we got rid of the Alex and Ryan, because we're not Alexandrian, we're not Andre design. Can you guys yeah. fucking read? <laughs> um, no, it's cool. It's cool. Um, so yeah, you guys you guys are coming out of the handguard. I'm super excited about it, because yeah. so the SPR... Yours is next. Yours is next. The MK2. Yeah. 
you would have had it a month or two ago, but we ran out of extrusions. Again, another, you know, extrusions are going crazy. There's a billet shortage. Some of the extruders are 52 weeks out. Anyways, <laughs> we're playing catch up on the machine. Yeah. Yours yeah. is next to go in. We're doing the SBR. It's a 10875 and the MK2, which is the new slim hand. Cool. So, so that's the only one. We've had Dan Brokos make comments that he likes that slim. He likes that there's other things he wants to put on that he has problems with. So we we decided to redo our our uh, slim. We also have a quad for that's those cool. quad guys that you know like the quad. We didn't reinvent the wheel, but it does attach. A so Mark 18 style. Yeah, yeah, if somebody has our SBR, they can literally take the handguard off and put it right on with you know six screws, and they don't have to mess with anything. And that's We've cool. been on a tip lately of just making like. Old stuff. Cool G Watt era stuff. The Gordon Carbon, yeah. you know, the, the is, CPBR yeah. Black Two. I mean, just well, that's just, cool. Yeah, yeah. just it's cool. Shit, just shit. We're like, you know what? I want to make this. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I saw fridge operators, a uh, little carbine action you got going on there. Yeah. And it's really funny because when he posted that, a, um, a gentleman that I, I'm friends with that um, I play video games with, I met through video games, Cody Wist, Widstrom. He, he posts a lot of your guns on his feed. It, he's not a big okay. page. He's a s small page, tiny page. You know, it's right. just his own personal page. But yeah. he did the same build as Fridge Operator at the same time. And I'm seeing the fucking like packing tape around like, and I'm like, wait, are these two hanging out together? <laughs> like, the same exact timing, same exact paint job. They might have, uh, you, you know, Cody might have been inspired by Fridge Operator. So I thought that was really cool. Um, yeah. I've got a Car 15 build from you guys, which is fucking rad. Anytime yep. I post pictures or shoot that, people are like, I want that gun. Um, it's fun to shoot them, man. Yeah. yeah. It is. It's not the latest and greatest by any fucking means, but I kind of want to put an yeah. aim point on it with. Uh, on on the on the um, carry handle because I kind of want to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah let me mount. know. Let me know if yeah. you have those I, little adapters. You have the aim point. I have the mount. Just well, maybe we should. Do, uh, maybe we should do like an upper for it with a proper carry handle. Like, do you have an aiming five? I I mean I I can just call aim point and have one deal. Yeah. No, you should call Alan uh, Engineering. Alan. Yeah. So John? that. Uh, Ron, Ron and Cheryl. Well, I get uh, them. I get them direct from the only distributor, the original distributor of Aimpoint. Like I get distributing. Oh, the, distributor. This is, the, this is a presser, not the not the Aimpoint. The can that would go on it. Oh, 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 oh the, the can that goes on it. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. I, no, we I don't have that SBR lower for the for for your gun, so we could yeah. we could make you. A, we could do you like a, we could do like a Gordon carbine upper, and then you could put the Aimpoint on top of that. That carrying handle. Oh, that'd that's be cool. Fixed. And then get um, the can. Get the yeah. can. It's it's you have to have the collar for the can because it it um the it threads over the barrel. Yeah, the the lockup is rear of the of the uh, muzzle. I'm really excited because it's been PCC life. Everyone's been all about the PDWs lately. Um, I yeah. think it's a great time to be coming out with one. And do you is, is the PDW stock system? Wink, wink. Uh, are you gonna end up coming out with like a short? Is it transferable over to like a short 300 blackout someday? Yes. Maybe that's what it's probably going to come. It's going to come out in five, five, six, and 300 first. Yeah, first, it's not going to be nine mil. No, you know, no, I, it'll well, be available in nine mil, but probably first it'll be 300 because um, there, there's one more Ooh. challenge in, yeah. in what the length nine barrel mil. six and seven eighths. Nice, it's going to have I mean, no barrel twist. Eight, six, <laughs> six and three quarter, six and seven eighths. Um, uh, with a one in five, right? Yeah. Uh, I, uh, the one in five, I gotta, I think I gotta rent or go buy or have a reamer made. Okay. Yes. I don't know. Yeah. If, I don't know if SIG is making, having somebody make the reamer for that. Um, which I think we have to, or we can rent one to try it. Um, Jeffy keeps on, keeps on saying he's been reading shit that the one in five is the shit with, with the twist rate. One in six isn't a problem. We have that reamer in stock. But you need one in five. It's the magic number for a barrel length that size, right? You know, I had this conversation the other day and I, I kept asking questions and, and the dude just got like butt hurt and walked away. It was, it was super strange. Um, I haven't done all that hurt he got when I was five. just like, explain it. Um, but what is the, what, so from somebody who understands, you know, twist rates 
pretty well. I mean, what is the, I mean, I want to, what stabilization over what range are we talking about that we're running into issues between one and five and one and six? I don't know the difference between the two twist rates. I know that I'm really close with everyone that designed the MCXs and the Rattlers. Yeah. And from the testing that they did, the barrel twist for one and five it just creates that stability out to 300 yards for three, uh, six and three quarter barrels. And they, like, were, they weren't seeing that out of the six at all. No, there, no. Key holing and shit like that. Uh, the stabilization, you would, you would have, I don't know how bad the destabilization was, but the magic recipe was one in five. Um, you can get away with the one in sixes for longer barrel lengths because you're putting more pressures behind it. But the one in five also helps with subs over distance as well. Fair enough. It's just giving it enough spin that it'll keep a subsonic ground stable over 300. And that's subsonic, not super. That's subsonic over 300. Yeah, granted, I have a six and three quarter inch barrel that's like 12 feet of drop or something absurd. But right. you will, you know, on a, on a, on a benched or viced gun, you're going to shoot a good group at that, that distance. And sure. I, I've shot 300 yards with a six and three quarter inch barrel, uh, 300 black. And yeah, you're, I'm, I think I, I was running supers and I was holding three feet high on the target. Yeah. That's a mortar. Uh, but spin around impact over and over, like repeatable, you know? Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think repetition is the key to, you know, the name of the game. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. you got, you guys helped us out yeah. with our Ukons, which has been fucking awesome. Um, you guys see the video I posted a couple days ago with me shooting, <laughs> shooting the fucking dude. I, we so for some reason the R4T Ukon um, post, the original post like introducing the product went viral, like six thousand likes. Um, I checked the insights, something like two thousand shares, a thousand oh, wow. favorites. Like I don't know what the fuck happened, but it got a lot of visibility on it, okay. and a lot of bozos were just like, "Oh, my shot radius," and like. I just don't understand where you're holding a rifle. It's not like you're shooting like a fucking 380 micro pistol with your hands right. and you don't have three points of contact. You have essentially one and you're right. trying to level everything out while moving upper body moving. We're talking right. about a fucking rifle that you have, right. you know, three points of contact, two hands on a shoulder, and you're just lining up vectors. People don't understand vectors. It's like just basic fucking algebra. You have right. two points, you line them up because you can, and then you press the shot because you right. can. And, you know, I was like, I did like five target engagement in a couple seconds and didn't have a fucking problem. And I didn't even oh. like, I didn't even bench that gun on paper or nothing. That red yeah. dot too. I, I took, I took my Romeo 4T off of the SIG factory mount, which is actually like uh, 0.138 shorter put it on that mount, which is higher, put it on the gun, check bore sight, it was perfect, went and shot a 50 yard zero, it literally didn't shift from that little height elevation change. Okay. And then, I don't know why, it just did nothing changed. And then I just Apple on the post, it like split split the dot with the front post and and just rough zeroed it and it was on. And And yeah. you know, I like the ghetto zero things, but people just like put that video up and everyone got quiet. Not a single Did fucking it? hater. Nice. Not a single person said shit after that. <laughs> you fucking... I need a lot of haters with everybody. Well, like... and, I mean, what's what's the point of the front and rear on that mount? I mean, what's 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 I mean, the intent of it? I think elevation is the only thing you really need for an emergency backup. It's an but, emergency backup. Well, so it's not right. emergency backup. I'm gonna be hundred percent honest with you. We designed that for. The Rattler and MCX systems originally, yep. Yep. Uh, so that if you're switching between subs and supers, your irons can be subs or supers. Your red dot could be the opposite, and for a CQB engagement, if you had to change between, because you know how quick you can change those gas blocks in the MCXs, you need to switch. Boom, switch a gas block over, and you need to run something a little different. Your POI shift is accommodated by the irons in a moment. So you can actually use your red dot to acquire, but then fucking, you know, use your irons to have a more accurate shot CQB style with a sub versus a super or something like that. So that was kind of like the modularity of it. Holdover too, no? 
Uh, yes, yeah. So it gets rid of that. It gets rid of all that. So, but but then you get but explaining that to the, the civilian market, they don't care. You know, we developed it for a military unit, and we fucking released right. it to the civilian market. I mean, guys, sight radius. Like, God, just punch yourself in the dick till you die. Right. Right. You know, and um, I don't read that shit. No. Unless your heart. I don't no. know how the fuck you don't. No, I, uh, I don't usually. Like, I uh, kind of like deleted some of the stupid comments. This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Go, uh, just, you know what? Because people will read that and go, I wonder why it's the dumbest thing you've ever yeah, seen. Ask some questions, and then they'll fair. get fed misinformation. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, ask us why you think it's stupid so we can talk about it. Right. And then, I, um, I mean, there's. There's plenty of people that have tested it, um, you know, and then, oh, uh, that was the other one. I said, well, this is adopted by th three tier one military units. And the guys are like, well, what units? And then Johnny, Johnny was smart enough. He hopped on and goes, bro, we have a NATO stock number through the UK Ministry of Defense for our RMR version. I hope that's enough to answer yeah. your question, 100%. you know? Yeah. <laughs> and the guy, awesome. no one said a fucking word after that. Yeah, well, he's in yeah. mom's basement too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's coming upstairs to eat meat. Well. He's concerned about his, he's concerned about the distance between his front and rear sight on a backup rifle sight on a rifle about being too close together. He's he's just he's chasing such a weird fucking. What do you? What? what? He follows up going. You shouldn't even need backup iron sights with a quality optic, and it's like <laughs> Bro. you're just contradicting yourself now. Yeah. Yeah, you've never deployed. <laughs> um, but, I, mean, I mean, Chris, you have a military yeah, background. Right. When you I are mean. issued uh, weapon systems, there's generally a backup iron sight requirement, even though you don't, even though you have an optic. 100%. Like the fucking liberal fucking bozos that are PMs for military units who know nothing about firearms read one fucking article saying you need backup iron sights for that. They create a requirement for it, and then. You know, all the weapon systems being issued to a military unit have iron sights. And, you know, the first thing fucking DevGrew and 2-2 and Grom do, they pull that thing, those, that shit off. Sure. But you still have an iron sight requirement. And we did a military contract with SIG for 400 MCX rifles going to a European country. And they all bought the, the military unit named Anvil. And you guys built the Anvils for that deployment or that issue uh, that that build um we they fucking they called out anr design by name we want that mount with this optic on your weapon system and like he, he, it doesn't get better than that you know it's like yeah, that's awesome. so, <laughs> so it's been it's been good you guys have fucking helped us out so much and we appreciate it um you guys also done some other cool stuff for us and we'll talk about it is um you guys helped us develop a mod so that we don't have to buy G-code RTIs and have supply oh, chain yeah. issues. <laughs> you... No, you can say I'm just yeah, I, we, don't, we, we don't care. You guys have helped us. We did that for you. You, yeah, you yeah. did it for us. You yeah. guys came out with, because so when we buy G-code RTI assemblies, they're a molded part that are then post-machined and they're right hand or left hand only. And you guys helped us come out with an ambidextrous one so that there is less, you know, oh, we're sitting on 500 left hand fucking RTIs accidentally. We can't return them. No, so now you guys uh, build the parts for us for the G code systems so that we don't have to stock two separate parts. And that was fucking yeah. rad of you guys. Yeah, it was uh, kind of an easy thing. We're like, why isn't this? Well, we started exactly. looking at it. I mean, you know, we we were both aware, and I was like, "Oh, this is probably pretty low hanging fruit here, right?" <laughs> it's, a, it's a fucking plate with some plate some of barrels. aluminum, and then and you know, but then we started thinking about work holding and how are we going to do this and what are we going to do here. We're like, this is kind of a pain in the ass to make. A, I mean, w w what it came down to is to machine that out of a plate of the thickness of the you know right. the overall with the with the you know the tits coming off there and and, and the, the flag tits. you got kind of a lot of waste a lot um where to do it out of two separate parts i mean it kind of just happened bar and stock lathe yeah just cut then, fucking yeah, sections right, out right. of it we, and then just have, cut plates yeah, <laughs> yeah we and were like oh it's also ambidextrous yeah. <laughs> we, we have a guy here that's super surprise and, and, please say yeah, ambidextrous really, again please ambidextrous. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, we do make it as a knit hog too, by the way. So those guys out there that have the Safari Land mounts that want to transition to the G code, yeah. we have that knit hog mount as well. So those you can buy those from us. Which is is that the right term? Isn't that your shit? Yeah. Knit hog's the name of our holster. Right. Okay. So that so right. we have the adapter to go from Safari Land to RTI. Yes. That's a better way to say it. Nidhogg, it, so I'm, this is going to be so fucking lame and people are going to be like, you're a bozo to me. Um, so I got really sick and tired of like all these fucking gun companies like coming out with like Viking bullshit. Anyway, yeah. it, it, Nidhogg <laughs> happens to be Scandinavian, but, you know, the really generic fucking names. And, you know, we do so like our Nidhogg has three different mounting solutions. So I'm like, oh, what what legendary beasts are three heads? Hydra, Cerberus. Oh my God! You know how many Cerberus tacticals they are, or Hydra, yeah, or Hydra Corp, or you know whatever. Um, so we, you know, we just came out with our three. Every web page is till Valhalla. Till Valhalla. <laughs> See you in Valhalla, brother. Um, stop it. Stop. So you, yeah. you, you know, like so, like we just came out with our three mag carrier banger, uh, the Ghidorah or Ghidorah. Um, you know, so like fucking Godzilla reference, and I then one of those, by the way, <laughs> thank you. What, why would you buy it. one? I would have just fucking sent you one because off. I support friends. That's yeah. what we do. Fuck off. Yeah, um, I have a, I have a spirit. So I how's your SBR gun back there? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> where's where's these new handguards, bud? <laughs> Touche. When those handguards are out, you're you're gonna get sick of me. Hey, I need this build. This fucking. This setup, uh, no, um, but it, it was one of those things that we were just like, fuck, we don't want to like, like the Nidhog. And Nidhog is uh, the H, the high, the high quality. Okay, I play a video game for twenty years because I'm a fucking uh-huh. loser. Um, Final Fantasy Eleven is a great video <laughs> game from Japan <laughs> online. Still play it. It's on my computer right now, running. Um, but there, it's it's a great reference for m- mythical beasts from all cultures. Okay. okay. So, like, Anvil, our brand, is a fucking, you know, a giant slab of steel that you forge on, right? Very so, nice. the Ukon line is Ukon Skavarna, which is a legendary blunt Thanks. sledgehammer. Oh. No. <laughs> so, like, our Anvil <laughs> line are named after, like, hammers. Like, we have a Molnir, we'll, we'll have a Yag Rush, like, all these, like, legendary fucking... I dig it. Uh, uh, hammers, clubs, and sledgehammers, and so like that's kind of like where I I pull names from is like except Master Blaster, that's obviously a fucking. Anyway, yeah. I, I I just try to be different. It's just too many people are fall off, fucking oh, uh, get some runes tattooed on your hands, bro. They're probably uh, racist now. Yeah, yeah, Which actually yeah. kind of makes probably. it cooler. So what inspired your names for your firearms? Because, because I am a terrible human and I'm OCD. Yeah. And I twitch all day because the shit's not perfect. So we do our best. I, you know, I'm not saying that we'll never lose, uh, you know, once something will slip through the, the cracks and we'll miss something. But what are you talking about? Day, what are you talking you know, about? I just asked you what inspired all your names for your rifle systems. I'm saying, I mean, well, it, oh, type, type A. a. I, mean, I mean, really, it was OCD. But it wasn't like type A. It's almost not t- it. Like Taipei, really... like the city? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Taipei, like, it, it, it's <laughs> not. Tai, it's almost Taipei. not the good side of Taipei, where you're like, yeah, you know, it's like a good leader. Yeah, yeah. It's like you can't fucking stand things being out of place. A little bit of hatred for right? yourself, right? Because, because yeah, like uh, a shitty person to be around is not a good name for a rifle company. Yeah, let me elaborate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why did you come up with the? Let me let me let me uh, add a little bit more context. Why did you name your guns the Contractor series and that and another? Uh, we we're just trying to uh, differentiate the, without confusing people. The, the pro is pretty obvious, right? It's just like a step up. It, right. It's a it's pretty low hanging fruit. But then the contractor, I mean, it was kind of it's the expensive thing, right? And I mean, first rule to contracting is it you know it's got to be cool. Yeah. Right. <laughs> dude seriously yeah. it's gotta be cool i mean it's gotta be cool I, it's the first rule of contracting yeah. anybody who contracted on on a set team or anything outside of like status site like security the first rule of kit is does it does it look good unless you're old <laughs> and then you can wear a fishing vest 
and still be gangster because you're like, what's going on with that? That guy's scary as fuck. <laughs> Why are you from South Africa and you're here? <laughs> you're like, I can't go home, mate. Like, All right, dude. So one of the None biggest of questions I've always gotten on our page is when when we started really running the fuck out of your weapon systems is, well, what makes Type A better yeah. than this company, this company, this company, and this company? And I, my response was, you guys make most of the fucking parts. What other company can say that you they make as many parts that go into their weapon systems as you? Yeah. And the level of quality control. I mean, even down to, um, even down to that clear blue tape that you put on some of the areas where if someone's at a gun shop and they're fucking they rack it and the dust cover pings the fucking Cerakote, yeah. you're literally hitting those 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 contact yeah. points to protect the firearm from idiots finger fucking these guns so that yeah, the person yeah. that might buy it off the shelf isn't upset that there's a ding there like yeah. i don't see that on any other weapon system on a fucking shelf anywhere that's yeah. what we mean by type a and yeah. about the person that you don't want to be around you're like you just you yeah. piece of fucking shit you just it's not even yours yeah. what the fuck are you doing yeah. right I mean, <laughs> so we're like just put some blue tape because there's stupid people that are gonna fucking touch it before you get your beautiful product uh, our, you, our guns are changing every day i mean we <laughs> you know from screws like the gun you got from us a while back it's not the same one you'd get today like no now all of our screws we either make or we have made we don't make screws made. or we bring them in house stainless and we have them coated yeah right so they're perfect you don't have like like you said, issues in the coating where you're like, what the fuck is this white cloud on this screw? And why are they rusting? You know, a big problem we had in the beginning was like, these screws were rusting. We're like, well, they're claiming to be nitride, right? And you're buying them in bulk from places everybody's buying them from. Yeah. So we're like, all right, we'll go to stainless. They shouldn't rust. They don't, they, they claim we get certs. They don't have any carbon in it. And we're going to send them to nitride. We're going to, we're going to nitride them. And we reject a bunch of them. Yeah. <laughs> Or we, or we reject them and resend them back. Yeah. So it's just yeah. attention to detail. Yeah. Um, Every time we ship screws, there's a bag of new shit and a bag of shit you need to fucking redo. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good though. Not a lot of companies do that. They just they're like, oh, it's just more it's more time added. And you guys are like, no, it's more value added for us. Like uh, Chris and I, there's been some times in our early early career where we, we made some tuition. We paid some tuition. Yeah. We made some shortcuts, and we learned real early. Like I'd rather okay. have these people pissed. I'd rather give them their money back and make them wait than send something that's not up to our standards. And we just decided we weren't going to do that ever. There, and there was some shit that, you know, we didn't catch and it went out and they're like, what the fuck happened here? Yeah. Hey, send it back. Let's fucking, let's fix, fix this. It. Let's yep. fix it. And we're going to fix it in perpetuity. Yep. Um, and, and there were some times where that cost them. That hurt. Yeah. It hurt. Financially. Yeah. But um, we've always made it right. And, uh, Fuck, it was worth it. Customer service. I mean, I answer the phone every day. One of our biggest <laughs> challenges is, well, our biggest you challenge. Fucking is, do that, dude. I'm not allowed to. I'm banned from customer service. It's close. It's rough. Yeah. I it's, uh, uh, the, the Chris is banned from customer the, service. No, no, it's me. I never even started. No, it's me. <laughs> our, our, our biggest challenge right now is, you know, customers are excited. Um, and for a lot of customers, I mean, it's it's a purchase, right? Some of these guys have worked their asses. An off investment. Off. It's an sure. investment and we understand that. But at the end of the day, I think a lot of these people don't understand what's happening right now. We're having, we're seeing, you know, our anodizing and nitriding times go from two weeks to 15 weeks. We're seeing um, billet extrusions. So the billet that they use to put in the Play-Doh machine to make the, the uh, extrusions for the, the handguards, there's a shortage, right? So how, there, how overdue was our last fucking shipment? We, we ordered it in January. We just got it, right? Um, yeah. You know, there's there's uh, aluminum uh, stock material that for the lowers and uppers that are always in stock at Alro. It's components, cutters, cutters. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about like half inch fucking end, end mills, mills that are you're like standard three weeks inventory. out, and you're like, what? what'd you fucking say? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, even though know, like law folders, you they law had a production issue. You sell a lot of law folders on your guns. Yeah. They're great, man. Yeah, that that that's been better. They've been really good. They've been keeping up. Um, we just uh, put we, in more orders. We have which a, oh, shit. There's deer around there. Um, but we uh, squirrel, sorry. squirrel. Uh, no, we have a no. Look, a yeah. bunch of deer. Yeah. No, no, anyway. I know. I'm just like Chris. You're like squirrel. Yeah. yeah, deer. Right. Yeah, deer, so deer. <laughs> <laughs> you see that fucking deer? You know, customers just they're just excited. So it's been real tough. Like customers will call every week and ask for an ETA, and we tell them it's six to eight months and they're on month two. 
Hey guys. Or, and, and how did nicely do you say like, you can't keep bothering me because I'm not getting anything done. Well, and, and, and if you, you don't respond, also, they'll call a credit card and do a charge back. And well, you're like, fuck. We, have, we haven't had that yet. Thank God. You get into some shit too, where you're like, all right, so this guy's got a pro. Um, you know, the gun is assembled. Um, the guy called two weeks ago and we're like, hey, your gun's an assembly, right? And in the gun, the shell of it's assembled, but we're waiting on the bolts to come back yeah, or the carriers to come back from fucking titanium nitride, right? Titanium nitrider tells me it's going to be fucking, you know, three weeks, we're, we're, weeks. We're, we're two weeks out from the delivery date, right? So it's been there probably four. We're two weeks out from the delivery date. Titanium, the bolts will come back. They'll get assembled within a couple of days, you know, checked. And then it'll, you know, the bolt will get dropped into the gun and get shot. So when the guy calls, you're like, okay, you're in assembly right now. And you're probably three, maybe four weeks out. And, he, and, and then it calls back in, in fucking four weeks. And you're like, where are you at? And you're like, you're in assembly. It was like, oh, I was in assembly four weeks ago. Like, yeah, that's, that's, you're still there. Yeah. That's fucking right. nothing I can do, I don't man. Have to explain my I don't, process I don't, I don't have the fucking bolts back. And also that time for me to go, you know, the first time we told you where you were at and that time that we told you this time, that was 20 minutes, right. maybe 30 minutes of a fucking employee's time to go find your shit on the fucking floor. Yeah, we, we stopped doing that. We literally, here's your receipt. You here's your fucking yeah. two to four weeks. We're not going to go look for it. We're not, How do you we, do it? We just, <laughs> so we basically say like, sorry, this is your prescribed time. And until it's past due, don't do this again. Sure. Yeah. And it's the only way because we have, we do, we have like, fuck dude, I have like a thousand holsters in process for a global ordinance. Like there's a pile of them stacked up because they're trying to, you know, we're trying to get caught up. We, we just moved our shop, get caught up on uh, CNC time. Um, you know, even though we have 10 people, we're like shorthanded. And then, um, you know, I'm going to be 100% honest. We, we stupidly told people that we were moving our shop in production. We'd be down for a few weeks. We lost a lot of money. We should have just extended our lead times and not said a fucking word. Probably. And, uh, and you know, our sales dropped by 60%. And, like, we're running wow. a sale. We're running a sale this weekend on everything to play catch up. So we're not in the red. And we've never been in the red. But we are finally in the red for the first time ever. But moving a fucking multi-million dollar fucking gun shop and machining um, manufacturing operation costs money. Yeah. So, um, and it was it was actually really cool. I, I had a customer. Hit- sale? I'm going to order some shit. Oh, my God. So <laughs> his forearm, Brandon's forearms are so much bigger than yours, Chris. Shut the fuck up. Um, oh, huge. Yeah. We, we, uh, uh, we had, got, had a customer. Brandon has a up. tendency to be like, oh, let me just. Uh, Flex on these hoes. Scratches them across. Oh, yeah, what's going on? Don't worry about it. No, it's a gym in your place, bro. Um, <laughs> we did. We, get, we did put a gym. We got shop. a pretty legit gym. Yeah, that's cool. So I told this customer, hit me up. He goes, yeah, hey, cool. man, you know, it. like. <laughs> I know this is a 15% sale, but your your Black Friday sale is 20% off. I'm just going to hold out for that. And I'm like, one, why did you tell me? Because that's not pertinent. But, you know, I was actually happy because yeah. I was like, look, man, we're running the sale because we fucking need it. We, right. That's why we don't do sales because sales kind of bounce your website metrics. They kind of fucking skew everything. We only do s- sales for Black Friday because uh, Black Friday, people don't understand that. September rolls around, people stop spending money because they're putting their kids through school and getting you know, back to school shopping. So November pre, pre-holiday is when everyone's kind of bounced back financially. So it's an opportunity yeah. for manufacturing companies, U.S. manufacturing companies to recoup money lost during the beginning of the fall. And yep. so that's a great way for all of us to make money. But, uh, or to, you know, keep food on the table at the end of the day. Right. But, you know, this guy hit me up and I was like, look, man, I would, uh, it would be so cool if you just bit the bullet on a, like, 20 bucks actually you know you're paying 20 dollars more than you would in black friday because like we're doing this because we need it you know right uh, i'll be 100 percent honest with you just we're a little tight right now and uh oh, shit. And, and he was like i really appreciate the honesty i'm gonna buy fucking more holsters now than i plan on buying in november that's a good customer and that's, that's a great that's customer. fucking great you know yeah. and you don't and, and 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 it comes out of transparency you guys are very transparent you guys do a lot of amas on um Instagram, you know, and, and doing this podcast, I was like, man, what the fuck do we like? We're homies, right? We like we right. hang out. We're like always fucked up and having fun at Shot Show or whatever. But, <laughs> but you know, it's like, what do I talk about? You guys about talk about us. you guys talk about so much already. What what do we talk about during this podcast that is a deeper dive than people really realize? So I think this is a great conversation where people kind of get yeah. some insight yeah. into 
um, you know, the manufacturing side and what we actually, the trials and tribulations that we're all going through as manufacturers. But just for perspective, what, how many rifles were you averaging in sales a week versus like the peak of COVID? So people understand why there's supply chain issues on the firearm uh, side. So for an example, we were probably doing, we were probably doing 100 to 200 uh, a week and then that probably multiplied by three to four. Holy shit. And like, how many employees do you have working for your main shop uh, at the time? We got a pretty tight knit. We have, yeah. One, two, three. This is where you'd be like, six, oh, that's seven. why you work 80 hours. I, we, <laughs> we got about 10 to 12, but we got some part time people. We also have some floaters. So, I mean, we're about, about the same number as you, but we got guys that we, you know, we have good guys. We have guys that have good attention to detail. They all come up and they're all kind of scared. Like, hey, man, can you think of this as handguard? I think there's like a little nick in here. We should probably like redo this one. And they're all scared to say anything yeah. to us because they're now they're like, we found another one that's bad. It's like send it back through, man. You process it. Yeah. That's but wild. Yeah. So you're doing yeah. fucking two, three times that. So yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of rifles. You're doing 600 rifle oh, sales. Growing so fast. I mean, 600 year... rifle sales a week for that many people. And you guys are hand fitting and hand checking and QCing every little facet and of those. Shooting. And, and you're going to still, yeah. You got to shoot and them, test them, bagging, and invoicing. Shipping. You have to keep track of all the serial How numbers. the fuck are you doing R&D? Oh, I know why. Well, I know we have why. other people helping us, but yeah. Mr. I mean, Patrick. <laughs> um, he's a bad motherfucker. How about his hey, new shit, huh? Yeah, Yo, Patrick, BP, BP Knives. Check them out. They just launched their Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. BP Knives. Pat Law is uh, one of the owners. Awesome. Great one of, name. Too. One of the owners of uh, BP Knives, um, he's one of our contracted engineers at AR Design. I introduced him to you guys because I said, enough. I got some homies that want to do some cool ass shit. They need some yeah. they need a industrial engineer that uh, can so people don't people don't know he specializes in aesthetics. Yep. So yep. that's industrial. Mechanical right. engineers yeah. are, you know, the build, the quality of the build. But he's not just aesthetics, though. He no, does do not. GD and T, yeah, and yeah. he does uh, dimensional and CAD, and yeah. he's he's a CAD guru. So I'm like, yeah. Pat, here's, here's a fucking pistol that the company <laughs> yeah. won't give me CAD for because they're a bunch of fucking cunts. Can you make this happen? And yeah. I can say that. I can say cunts. Um, you can say whatever you want. No, I mean, I'm not going to like bury my company by saying something stupid and bigoted like some people do, but. There's no scenario where those people were the customer to begin with. <laughs> so anyway, long story short, I'm like, yo, um, fucking here's, here's a pistol. He'll literally fucking do it in like three hours. Yeah. We'll 3D print it at the shop. We'll fucking it's test it in a finished hole. So we go, yeah. huh, this fucking works pretty good. Yeah. Then we run the CAD through our engineers. They build the fucking plate yep. and then they test the real gun in that. And then they make very minor adjustments for fit. Sure. Which and is... then it's, it's done. And, and his yeah, rate, his rate. So mad moose LLC, yeah, design. mad yeah, moose yeah. design LLC is his R and D, uh, industrial design company. And you can find him on the internet. <laughs> Yeah, and he's yeah, got very good rates. Tell anybody, he's yeah, actually, can you edit this out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's fantastic. No, he's yeah, yeah he's, he's a, a he's a gangster. We worked on um, with him on a lot of projects. We, he's a very lot. good collaborative industrial engineer yeah. designer, yeah. but he does GD and T, which is super important. You can uh, very much give him a napkin sketch idea, and he will hit the mark. Yep, I don't even have to give him a napkin sketch. I'm like yeah. Pat. I need um. Yeah, you know how there's a void in the market for a uh, Picatinny to Picatinny riser. Uh, yeah, can we do that? But like, create an Ucon version of that. All right, cool. Thanks. Got Click. It. Cool. Yeah. And he'll be like, "Hang on, I'm just gonna order a coffee real quick." <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Twelve hours later, he's like, "Can you check the drawings?" And I'm like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. I bet you I've had no fewer than four phone calls with him. And be like, "Hang on a second, Chris. I just gotta order a coffee real quick." Yeah. Can I get a black coffee iced, please? <laughs> he's at Aroma Joe's, like, yep. Yeah, right. he's got, didn't he have like a charger in the background? A bunch of 3D printing machines the other day when we were on Skype with a phone call. Dude, yeah. he's he's so good. So yeah, if you are struggling to make your shit sexy, mm -hmm. not that, not that you guys were, your shit's sexy. No, but no, uh, no. But he he he, he, uh, he came right in. Man. He fills he, uh, he fills some voids that people don't realize they're missing until they 100%. meet Pat. Yep. 
and, and Pat will sit down with you, take your time. He'll do a storyboard. He'll understand who you are, what your tastes are. Yep. And then he'll design products around what you like, not what he likes. Right. So that's really hard. There's a lot of like, even like uh, web designers or even people that are like proficient and it'll, it'll be illustrated, but they're one sided. Right. They, they do what they like. Pat can do what you like and do it well. Yeah. Uh, cause our, our aesthetic and our style wasn't, was not necessarily exactly what he was looking for No, or, or his, his, his taste. Um, but you know, we kind of put, put it there and he was like, Oh, you guys are like fucking weird Vi- Miami vice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> HK <laughs> meets style. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's kind of what I was talking about. <laughs> but it's just, um, it's one of those, it's one of those things, man, like the stars align. You just have, and, and you know, right. I'm going to toot my own horn here. I pride myself on being you a tactical, tactical matchmaker. Yeah. Um, you pushed that, out. Yeah. 100%. It's out. like, it's like, you know, people call me and just be like, Hey bro, I need a nylon dude. Oh, I got them. Hey, um, I need uh, an OEM, you know, uh, aluminum, a company that can cut stuff out of aluminum. Oh, type A, like here, meet right, these dudes. Yeah. I've actually been hit up quite a bit lately for uh, oh, aluminum goods. So you might have some people reach out to you soon. Sure. Yeah. Um, oh, you need a web guy? I got a dude, right? So it's, so you need belts in, in the same, in, and that kind of stems from like my background working with military units is like, Hey, so while we're buying your holsters and we like the content that you produce and you're a good shooter, you know, what would you use for this? Oh, I have a solution for that. And this is it. Right. Or I can do this for you. Um, I mean, even down to like, I got NATO stock numbers for other companies rolling right now. Right. Which is great, man. You're yeah. building your fucking community. Yeah. Right? And not awesome. in like the shitty, like, oh, you got to build your tribe, bro. But listen, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I, it's hard to even talk about it without it being fucking gaggy. But yeah. in, in, at the end of the day, you know, you you identify a group of good folks and you surround yourself with good people. You hit it. Yeah. That, that, that is what it is, man. It's okay. it's cool. I mean, dude, you're, you're, I'm, I'm happy you're we met. An, you're an ambassador. I'm not shut the fuck up. No, you're an ambassador. No, you're an I feel like a brand. Hold on, let me get my bang hey, energy drink want, out real just, quick. I just, I just want to talk to you about how you're an ambassador for the the industry, man. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, shit, dude. We got introduced from a mutual friend, and yep. um, I'm happy for it. He's he's a stud. He's not my friend anymore. <laughs> uh, um, no, but he's a, good, he's a good friend. But it's it's one of those things where it's like you know just everything happens for a reason yeah, Ti- yeah. timing it, it, you know it's like it's time life is about timing like there's no such yeah. thing as luck it's just timing you just happen sure. to be there at the right time with the right people and, and it works itself out um ieds <laughs> damn dude okay dark. oh chris has had chris has had four beers he's, so he's gonna get real he dark it. now we need to wrap it up <laughs> i can tell he gets a little squinty eyed when he's yeah, had a few beers do. and he's ready to talk about some dark like this guy's guts were out one time when i was contracting you know oh i saw this dead baby on the road and i laughed no i'm just kidding he's <laughs> constantly talking about how people move after they die it's all a time uh, so yeah so for people listening chris chris has a military background and the contracting mm-hmm. background and there'll be times where he'll just you'll just be sitting there and nothing will be going on he's just like hey this one time when blah 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 <laughs> and this bone was sticking out and it was fucking funny and you're just like dude you're fucked up yeah, but i love yeah. you that's the alcohol <laughs> <laughs> you can see he's starting to get a little uh, rosy here uh, oh man i mean fuck dude i miss you guys i miss all I miss three you of too, you man. in the room we were talking uh, to pat today about him coming here, but maybe we just need to take a trip up there and kill two birds with one stone. We can also kill birds while you're here. There you go. We can do that. Yeah, too. Be, I, yeah. I don't hate that idea. Um, I mean, fuck, dude. My dog, if you guys want to do like an October trip out here, Pat wants to hunt over my pup. Um, the three of you in that room can come out and uh, I can get enough. Zach works at Weatherby. I can get some fucking side by sides over here. Nice. nice. <laughs> And we I mean, Pat's, no, Pat's I've never to, right? shot birds with a side by side. Okay, so it's the only way to live, dude. It's fucking over unders mm-hmm. are overrated, and side by sides are like the northeast, like bum fuck poor boy way, and it's even better. Okay. Um, you guys can all come out here, stay at my house, and literally, we'll hop in my fucking side by side, borrow my neighbor's side by side, and leave my house out the backyard and kill things. Nice. All right. 
Yeah. Then, Did you guys see that. the photo of the 400 pound black bear that's in my backyard? No. Oh. Go what? on my wow. personal Instagram. He's chonky. And that was like four weeks ago that photo was taken on the trail cam. No he, shit. That's like fresh out of hibernation and he's chonky. I'm gonna shoot him this winter or this yeah, fucking I'm gonna shoot I him in September. Him. If I fucking see him, dead. Uh, is it tough to get a permit up there? Just self defense. Can you say permit again? Permit defense. Permit. Permit. permit? But you, there was like a permit. Like it was like emphasis permit? on the permit. It's a northern thing. Oh permit. man. I like no. the Jeff, can you give me a good fire? Fire. fire. Can you say fire, Jeff? <laughs> Can you say boobs? <laughs> this, this one time I was near a fire. <laughs> That's a Grand Rapids that? thing. Fire. That's a Grand Rapids thing. There's a guy that uh, there's a gentleman that works at our shop that uh, his family's from Grand Rapids and no he shit. he uh, his his yeah his extended family's from Grand Rapids like he's historically from Grand Rapids. His mom's from Grand Rapids and uh, she grew up saying like. Yeah, so I was fired. Like, not saying that she was fired, but like, she, like, there's that emphasis on the ear part of it. And, um, and it's a thing. It's a fucking thing. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, it'd be super cool. Um, Chris, I got a, I got a whiskey bar downstairs and a, and a wood stove. So you can just fucking sleep down there on an air mattress and you'll be fine. Yeah. Nice. He's like, well, yes. <laughs> That's um, true. Yeah. That's true. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you fall asleep pretty well in strange places so yeah um so sure. so what uh what so you do oems you got new products coming out you got a new pdw system coming out with a new yep. stock yep. system coming out um yep. what else are should people be looking for in the future what else are you guys doing you got the handguard the handguard's gonna change the game for your products yeah um mm -hmm. your, your your current handguards are fantastic um, but you guys new charging handles, we have a new charging handle. That's going to have three different size ears. You'll have a small, medium and large. Oh, and I got a little stiff. Up. Yeah. Yeah. So that's okay. coming up. Um, Abby? You know, yep. Oh yeah. It's always going to be ears, plural. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Jeff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff. Um, we have, <laughs> he's not a oh. beer bitch. <laughs> he was going anyway. <laughs> we have all new, like we have a bunch of different guns coming out in terms of like some micro 300 blackouts, micro 556, and then carrying into the nine, obviously what we have now. So we have some different barrel lengths in nine coming out. Um, I, you know, we're Ooh. a new adjustable gas block. I mean, uh, shit. What? Who, wait, say have, that, say that uh, louder. We have a very interesting, uh, where we get into uh we, we have a interesting 357 thing coming out sig. 357 sig sig yeah we we kind of thought we were there to release it but we're revamping it so that's coming out um it's gonna make it even you should do like a yeah. 44 raptor gas gun i mean because yeah. no one's ever done that one person's right. done that um yeah, we got a bunch. I mean, we have a ton I'm of shit do that. that we want to do that is uh, just a we little We have a bunch different. of different accessories coming out. Yeah, accessories. Yep. Like handguard accessories, grip accessories. Yeah. Correct. Yep. 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 We've been working on some backup sites. Um, yeah. We're not there yet. I don't think there's a ton of great backup flip-ups. No. 100%. There's not that many. There's only ones. two, in my opinion. I think there's literally two in the market. Right? I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. guess it's CAC and Magpul Pros. <laughs> Ding. Is, is there any? Yeah, yeah is they're there the best. Any other? Yeah. Sorry. There, there isn't any. Never rush. <laughs> Double fisted. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Uh, I mean, no. the knights are machined and the Magpuls are min, you know, but um, those are the two best. So we're gonna come out with a new set of those. Um, we're gonna come out with some new more quad length handguard. We're gonna cool. do some more wrench, retro stuff. We're yeah, gonna do some... got any ideas for some cool fucking, I don't know, let's make a gun. You should no. you should uh, talk to Pat about making a gun because I think Pat's got some things with guns that could be done with guns that you guys could do. So I'm sure he's yeah. talked to you about yeah, that. Yeah. We have, yeah. we have. And he's got some stuff going with well, some other folks and that, that is what it is. But if that falls through, we, we would happily well, execute on I can that. tell you exactly what I want in a gun. Okay. All right. Let's hear it. Magazine hey, fed. Write that shit down. All no, right. no, no, no. Right. I want I want to see... Uh, a a set me C six 
in an AR platform, like a delayed gas blowback 556 five, AR. Roller okay. lock AR. Oh, yeah, fuck with the because it's so it's soft. Easy. Who makes one right now? Nobody. It's all, yeah, I was going to say. No way. Uh, you, it's basically an HK51. Yeah. Uh, so it um, it wasn't it was the, the STG44. The 51s were three. There were 308s, no. Oh no, yeah, you're right. Uh, HK. No, the fi- 51s were. 51s were. Jeff needs to be our Jamie. Jamie, look it up. Or Jeffy. I mean, I hey. can look it up. I have a fucking PC right in front of me. Yeah. Um. HK. The 91s were. 308. HK91. HK91. 308. We're working on our AMB. Oh, yeah. Billet 308, too. Am I right? Am I right? I don't. No, that's HK51. That's a fucking. That's that's Wikipedia. That's. What the shit? HK91 is the 308. What the fuck's the. If HK fifty one hasn't been taken, we're just gonna. Hold on, I'm just gonna, gonna do five five six roll, <laughs> not roll, ruler lock. Why can't I remember? I could have sworn it was a fifty one. Hey bud, can you get me a bottle? I gotta pee. <laughs> no, we can. Pop. It's fine. We can. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got a bottle right here. We're good. If you fucking dribble on me. No, I it's okay. We can I'm pause. Dribble on you. You're over there. Oh, H HK thirty three. Fifty three. Thirty three. Fifty three. Thirty three. Did I catch a niner in there? Thirty three. Okay, thirty three. Thirty three. I didn't actually pee. Oh god, I actually do have to pee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm just gonna pause it. <laughs> oh, that was a good uh, pee. We gotta turn the machines off too. Jeff. Jeff trigger. is on a uh, diet, and every time he doesn't go on his diet, he gets taste. That was the deal. But I mean, that's. Not very nice. Are you smoking weed? Yes. Yes. yes, for hope. First of all, I'd like to go on record and say there was like a real moment of like, I'm really concerned. I have some shit. I got to work through it. And I was like, listen, man, if you want, if you agree, I am willing to say, if I see you putting shit in your mouth, I'll I will you. fucking taser you. Can you look at the like, camera, Chris? It's creepy. He was like, okay, it's that's a good idea. <laughs> Chris, are you high right now? <laughs> Maybe he's not. like, that's a good idea. And I was like, okay, but know what you're fucking getting into. And what you're getting into is, this is a promise. He hasn't gotten to Man, I'm, okay, yeah, uh, I already started the, Jorge, at one hour and 43 minutes, please delete all the drug, alcohol, and piss talk. <laughs> and tasing employees is also wrong. Um, What's this world coming to? Yeah. Right. Anyways, I, I we would love suggestions. I mean, we're we're down. We we've been talking to Patrick about working on a project. We really want to come out with something that's uh, pissed uh, grip fed. It's a TP, that's, that's our the dream. TP nine is garbage. Super garbage. Have you put your hands on an MP seven? Yeah, my buddy's got four of them. Garbage. Do yeah, you want to sell one though? Yeah, I mean, we like them, but they're not that. Do you crazy. want to pay twenty? Four thousand no, no, no. HK. No. No. He he so, bought it. They're all they're all no letter guns and they're about to be no letter guns again, but it's not worth it for a no letter gun. Now I just bought my set me C six. Uh oh, fuck we have to edit that one out too. Because he's fine. he's bailing on his business partner. Anyway, um, <laughs> um oh. <laughs> I bought a set me C six and an FNC from him. There are a bunch of machine guns on his list. If you guys want to own the XM8 from HK serial number 00001 or the XM um the XM4, um he's got two lower receivers from the original Marine prototype um development, uh 0002 and 0003, those are for sale. How what, what, what are they worth? Uh well, they're no litter guns. They're probably like 5 grand to have the prototype lower from the original Marine program. Sure, Let, I'll buy those. I can introduce you. Uh, okay. After this, just shoot me an email asking for an introduction because I'll forget. Jeff, you do it, please. And uh, I'll introduce you to Peter and Brett 
and they have a list and they're the all, they're all formerly larry vickers guns but he's getting rid of them uh most of the belt feds on the list are non-functioning <laughs> that's why he's selling the belt feds but um most of the non all the non-belt feds are all fully functional he just what's isn't. wrong with the belt feds uh the hk 51 whatever belt fed. um they're just like they're not feeding their issues he's gonna set me l the only set me l in the fucking country which is the 556 five, spanish um uh 556 five, uh, belt fed it just won't run there's something wrong with the fucking extractor and feed tray um and Larry Vickers guaranteed all these guns to be good, and like half of them are bad. My PKM broke pins out the gate and stopped yeah, running. Right. Yeah. Yeah. How's it running now? Uh, M13 rebuilt. So what happened was the ejector, yeah. the ejector, um, it's like a piece of spring steel that was out yeah. of timing, and the, so it was out of timing so it was opening the dust cover and then shutting too early which was causing steel cases to cam in between the receiver and flex the receiver uh that plus uh the gun outruns itself with a can because it's an asshole so i actually bent the receiver so they had to kind of tweak some shit uh hammer some shit tsa fucked my gun up too they threw my pelican case onto a hard surface the charging handle dented my receiver inward and froze the charging handle they had to replace the charging handle they had to rewrite the charging handle uh slip uh, cut down the side um kind of fix everything uh, yeah it was you fucked up brain wreck. yeah but now it runs great nice runs good with a can on it with a can yeah it's still i can only run it every 1200 rounds you have to clean it with a can which is not a lot for a pkm no. Um, so I might run it unsuppressed more often than not. It was cool to have it suppressed for pig hunting, but and it's pretty quiet. It's like almost hearing safe because the barrel length is so long. Right. Plus the nine inch can, like you could shoot it without ears and like you'll be fine. You're pretty much deaf. Uh, someone with virgin ears would probably be like, oh, that's a little bit of ear sting. Um, well, I mean, to be fair, the point of a belt bed most of the time is to make everybody fucking duck, yeah. which means be loud and scary. Yes, um, Jorge just bought me the Ranger. Uh, he bought me the Ranger handbook, which has the uh, SOPs for <laughs> and the firing um, firing maneuver yeah. firing maneuvers yeah. for machine yeah. guns. Because he's like, "Do you know any firing maneuvers?" Like, there's like a science between running a belt fed, and I was like, "No, I didn't yeah. know this was a thing." He's like, "Oh no, it's like conal whatever." And yeah, so I'm gonna start reading it because I like belt feds. Die, die motherfucker, die cover. release. What was that? Die, motherfucker, die, release. That's your cadence. You I, know I, know, that? I know machine gun yeah. cadence already. I just don't know, like, the different courses of fire for certain scenarios. That's okay, what so I was interested in. Your basic fucking ditty is, you know, especially when you want to do d talking machine guns, right? Everybody knows the same cadence. You all have to be on the same fucking page. So die, motherfucker, die, release is, is the fucking ditty. So when you come into that trigger, die, motherfucker, die, release. Right, and at release, your next machine gun should be coming into play. So die, motherfucker, die, release, die, motherfucker, die, release, die, but... and you should be able to keep everybody fucking ducked while the well the rest of the infantry unit moves in to you know gut people with. Did, did the Marines do battlefield dr battlefield drill alpha one? Was that also in the Marine repertoire? Or... What? <laughs> so in the <laughs> army, in the army, there's battle battlefield drill alpha, which is like. You have like a almost an Aussie peel. No, is it an Aussie peel? No, you have uh, in, uh, you have dudes coming into coming into firing on a position, and then you have the opposing uh, your your uh, support force at a ninety to where the you know entrenchment or whatever the fuck the guys that you're shooting at are. Mm -hmm. And then as this force comes down or comes across into where perpendicular to where the enemy is they start shooting the enemy and then the primary fire raises up above enemy heads so that the perpendicular unit can go through and kill people and then the primary fire goes through and do dead checks it's like drill alpha one for the army this is an l-shaped ambush exactly it's the same thing yeah but everyone's got everyone's got a different name for it like yeah. between um 
Oh, one hundred percent. You would saw, think we'd be all on the same page. I saw the Seal Handbook. Uh, 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 Team Five guy had one. How many volumes were? No, so it's, it's, <laughs> it's actually not. No, no, no. It's actually not the Seals. It's it's weird. It's like most of it is like the Ranger Handbook, but then there's like some things fed into it that are Seal related. But and... also swim side stroke. <laughs> okay, I'm probably gonna have to delete everything from one hour and forty three minutes to now. <laughs> But also, like, you know, gel your hair, bro. <laughs> I've heard rumors. I'm going to pause it. I've heard. All right. So, in... so I, this this was a great podcast. It was nice to catch up with everybody. Um, um, I'm sorry I didn't um, reach out to you for an SPR because I'm an impatient cunt and just wanted to buy a $400 upper to make my life easier for a class. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm atoning for my sins. You're good. We forgive you. What What do you got coming? What? Tell me. What do you have? Well, you have that collab with Spiritus. You keep asking about me. No, no yeah. it's not a collab with Spiritus. That, they didn't do it for that. So it was a collaboration with Velocity Systems that we came out with that Gitter. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, we have a SR25 pattern two banger with a modular left side right side pistol version coming out soon. All right. We have. Um, a ton of military projects. We just got done with a over and covert holster tier one project for a US um US tier one team. Um another European country just NATO stock numbered a bunch of our holsters. So I think we're gonna be up to six or seven NATO stock numbers. Awesome. Uh we just got approvals for another uh European country for quite a few holsters um borders are opening up hopefully in july in europe so we have to go back over soon we're going to dsei in london in september um there's a couple more uk projects that i got going polish projects i have going spanish italian projects that i have going so i'm really excited about those uh we have some USI breaching equipment projects that are rolling through, which is fun. Explosive breaching and shotgun breaching projects. Sweet. Um, Let us know how we can help on that. Yeah. Um, matter of fact, when we jump off here, we should take a quick chat. I had a idea slash conversation to have with you about one of your items. Oh, we could do that. Absolutely. Um, no, we just got. I'm really excited about the military side. We got another engineer on our staff now, who's going to take over pistol holster development. Um, you know, we have CAD for TLR seven subs. We have CAD for Surefire XXCs. Everyone's like, "When's the XXC fucking Glock forty eight holster coming out?" Like, holy fuck, we just moved our shop. You know, we have a backlog of projects. We probably have sixty seven holster holster light projects coming out. Um, we just. We actually just, uh, from my design through my engineer's execution, we're, we we figured out how to CNC automate standard outside the waistband holsters. Hmm. So our okay. normal pancake tight to the body holsters, that you couldn't tell the difference between our hand molded, well, they're vacuum molded uh, by hand versus a, you know, on a, a 3D gun mold versus um, our two-piece butterfly split OEM mold. Uh, for cutting so you can tell the difference they look identical they function the same the okay. fit is perfect on both of them but one is mass manufactured one's not so as an fn project we're finishing up cool. and then we'll just carry that over to all the popular models and light models that we already have on spectrum so i mean yeah there's probably like 120 fucking new tools that we have to cut yeah uh, but, <laughs> but but they're not bad though like we could do yeah. we could do like Honestly, with both of my engineers doing pistol projects, we could probably do two tools a day. And that's, and if you look at Kydex and, and all the accessories and all the Kydex options, that's probably 350,000 SKUs in 80 days that we can take away from custom molding. Um, custom molding is getting easier for our uh, associate that works custom molding. And the more that we can pull, you know, generic stuff away from him, the more he can focus on some of the weird shit uh, that right. does take time. Right. So we're, we're maximizing his time more effectively. 
So it's good. It's good. Um, and then, yeah, we have a, a, a project for you guys that I'm probably going to need samples quick if possible because it's going to be game change. Yeah, I have not that? seen. Yeah, we do. And I have not seen the drawings yet. Okay, so I thought he was going to send through the basic drawings, but he I wants to finish. Him. He wants to finish uh, one of the plate inserts for yeah. it before we push it through to you guys because he's like, oh, I'll just bang it out real quick. Be fair. If you can give us... I mean, when you know, if you if you want us to quote something or look at something, um, you know, when you have a basic sort of outline shape, yeah, um, whether Just you have the criticals or, or not, if you if you send that to us, obviously we have our. You start thinking about how we hold it. Yeah, the 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 one of the hardest parts is how the fuck am I going to hang on to this thing as I work it through the different processes, right? Right. And if I have a basic outline shape, I can start thinking about the work holding yep. now. Well, luckily he skeletonized it, so there's opportunities for holes on the y-axis as well. So, um, I yeah, I'll I'll get with uh, P money, um, on that one. But yeah, um, yeah, we're we're super excited. We got so much cool stuff coming out. A lot of stuff that we've been dragging our feet on just because of time. I had one engineer for the longest time trying to do everything, including special military projects on top of new product development, which is not conducive. But it came down to a money thing, like. Yeah, you know how do I hire more engineer? And yeah. um, we just uh, funny funny story. Our videographer was like, "Hey, this other company uses this 3D scanner to scan pistols, so that you can make molds from it." And I was like, "Yeah, we have one of those. I'm just having issues turning the shelled, uh, you know, seven billion data points uh, of a yeah, shell a into a solid." Dude, yeah. in one day, that motherfucker figured yeah. it out and, and 3D oh, really? printed a solid, but then he also 3D printed 100% solid on my 3D printer. I was like, you use how much filament? <laughs> All like, of it and some more. <laughs> Sorry, most of it. Oh, because I that, that spool lasted fucking a year and a half and you burned it in a heartbeat. Yeah, about that. Um, I bought another spool. I was like, you don't have to do that, dude. It's not a big deal. Um, I was just busting his balls for it. But yeah, he. so we we tested the alien, the Lago alien. He did a 100% filament fill. Uh, fits in the holes are perfect. So now we have a new way to uh, expedite the CNC process or the, the prototyping process for pistols that we can't get CAD for. So yeah. And we don't have to use some video software. There's a couple companies that will like use couple different software techniques to to get that shit into reality and, and he figured it out in like a day and he's a has no idea what he's doing but he's good at research so anyway um so let's wrap this up before yeah, we start sure. talking offline um thank you so much brandon thank and chris yeah. type a rifle company um a subsidiary of bg defense this is episode 15 of the a r Design Unholstered Podcast. Any closing comments from you two? Oh, appreciate it, man. Keep killing it. And uh, let me know, let us know how we can help. Yeah. Cool. I love Anytime. you guys. I appreciate you. You've been nothing but helpful Ten and great friends. Peace, <laughs> <laughs> man.